informal and why not, right? So, there we go. And we're making your silver pants. Boo! Anyway, so, I think I am pretty much done base coating this sword. Now, for all you guys, it might seem a little bit more difficult to see that, but too, too bad I changed the camera again, and I'm not moving it again. So, what is gold? See, it's very shiny. Well, it's hard to see on the camera, but in in the real world, how I'm viewing it, it's a very lustrous gold. I have a friend, he actually tested out uh, the Vallejo gold that comes in that little that little jar. And he showed me some pictures of it, and I was like, holy man, that looks great. Like it just it almost it almost looked like a gold chrome. And how like the light, like it gets into a real rich tones down where it's closer to the shadows, and it you know was uh, much brighter up near the top and yeah it was just it's just really nice work and so but for this gold we are going to here I'll switch the state frame for you and so we are going to hit it with some griffin sepia I like using this for the gold rather than devlin mud uh, a lot of people will use devlin mud but prefer the sepia as it has a much warmer tone and devil in mud is just you know it's just it's a little too dark when it gets into crevices and it tints everything in kind of a you know very it's, it's 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 not a very rich color whereas griffin sepia is a much richer color to work with and so and i've loaded my brush pretty heavily with this but I don't want to hit it too, too much because I don't want to get into my cloak. And so, there we go. That's a fun stuff with this wash. And, you know, I really wish you guys could just see this in person because, like, that's just so pretty. I, mean, I just totally think this one. And for all you guys out there who aren't into War Machine and stuff, um, you know, don't worry. I'm not, I'm not all about the war machine these days, uh, especially with sixth edition coming out. <sighs> Ooh, that's going to be exciting. Apparently, the flyers are going to be a regular occurrence. And, ooh, it's all just so exciting. I just can't wait. I can't wait. It's just, you know, I'm still a big fan of 40k. I mean, that's. I can't say it's the first game I got into. The first game I got into when I started getting into this was Space Hulk. And when they re-released it, I was one of those fools who bought it right away. And I don't regret it at all. I've played it a bunch of times. I even, you know, introduced my son into gaming with it. And, you know, I thoroughly enjoy Space Hulk. It's the tension. It's, you know, and, you know, I really miss a lot of the old um, specialist games. Like, Games Workshop really, you know, they need to support those classic games because it's those smaller games that get more people, in my opinion, get more people into war gaming. And, I don't know, maybe some of you guys might disagree with me and think, no, 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 it's the big game that gets everybody into it. And all jacked up and, you know, everybody's all excited. In my experience, in wargaming and such, the smaller games have always been what got people into the gaming. And, you know, it's exciting. You know, and it's, it's so simple to get into a, a smaller game. Uh, Blood Bowl, for example, is a great game. And, you know, like, and there's still groups, like there's a group even here um, in, in this area, and they still play Blood Bowl. And you know, that's great. I mean, that's wonderful that people still embrace a lot of those games. Bought Battlefleet Gothic. I had a big Eldar fleet for it. And, you know, it was a lot of fun. You know, and it offered a, a diversion uh, for 
you know, from, from 40K, because 40K was my main focus, but, like, those other smaller games, like, they're great for just, you know, a couple nights, you know, Blood Bowl, play a league, you know, um, play, a, like, a, a championship, and play the Super Bowl, and, you know, uh, Battlefleet Gothic. Uh, incorporate it into your campaigns, so that, you know, like, you're fighting over a planet, and then you're playing Battlefield Gothic games to determine uh, support from outer space, right? Because, you know, the, the guys on the ground have to get support. And so whoever's controlling outer space kind of stuff, you know, is controlling who's getting supplied. And, you know, you play it all these different ways. And, you know, it's really unfortunate that they don't, they don't support that. And they really should. Because it makes the, it makes the whole gaming universe richer. And, you know, I mean... It draws people in because it's exciting because there's people out there, you know, like who've played like, you know, the, um, the old Star Trek base, space based game and they had a thing for 40k or always curious about it. And then they see people playing the Battlefleet Gothic. Oh, you know what? I think I might get into it. It's kind of simple, of course, compared to Star Trek, but you know, stuff like that. Um, yeah. I can't remember where I was going with this whole rant, but, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> I need somebody in here to help me uh, keep on track with my thoughts, I think. I kind of get lost as far as what I was talking about or what my original point was. And so, anyway. Where are we? We're just waiting for this to dry. And it's almost dry. So the plan is, okay, that her sword is gold, just like her artwork, right? Because I'm trying to do this like her artwork. And so her sword is a gold, but like there's this amber glow where the runes are. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some light sourcing on her cloak so that it kind of gives the hint that her sword is glowing. And then her hand, her hand is kind of cupping her, uh, the cuff of her shirt, not the cuff of her shirt, but like the collar of her shirt, or her dress, or her armor. <coughs> and so I'm thinking of doing a um, kind of a couple streaks of glowing coming out of the hand, and like upwards, and then her hand is kind of cupped, like it's kind of like that kind of view, like it's cupped around. And so I'm having a glow from under, from within her palm, this little blue go glow. Man, I'm having a hard time speaking today. And did I chip this model again? Or has somebody been playing with this? Somebody's coming into my office. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. You know what, though? Is that red? Red enough? Or should it be a little bit redder? A bit brighter? So. I don't know. So again, what do you think on her shawl here? Think she needs a floor pattern or something? I don't know. It's kind of hard to decide. I'm kind of divided right now. And so, let's see. Gold. Okay, so. Uh, So, we're just going to start highlighting and basically just bring the brightness right back. Actually, you know what? It's probably best if I make it brighter, closer to where the glow should be happening, eh? Yeah. So, get some more gold. Palette. Anybody who paints models should always be using a palette. I see a lot of people, even around here, I see people still painting from their, from the jar. And that's not good. Now, I'm not saying it's, you know, terrible, but at some point, you got to kind of realize that better you maintain better color control when you're running your 
paints from a palette. And so 